Sorry, I sort of lost my head. Put that old trucker's slounge mug up there. I wasn't paying attention. You were doubting me. This is the good stuff. People kill for this stuff. Yeah? I didn't mean I know you're kind. It's 3.59 time. Jamming gears in a nine-speed hood I'd pull it in if I knew I could The old truck stop's been gone a long time So kick it in the rear and put the hammer down Get this show on the road, shall we? Eighteen wheels just laying it down And you can hear that humming sound Pouring coal from a bright chrome stack Ride this off like a Cadillac It's my life, it's my love It's my heat I built 359 I'm watching you guys Welcome back to the channel It's Dane Scott from Dane Scott's Trucker's Lounge Got a treat for you today uh, Had a recent sit down with a good old buddy of mine uh, Ron Mackey Who uh Used to drive uh, some old school trucks, and he's got uh, lots of tales, uh, some of which we can't tell on here, because <laughs> I try to keep this kind of family friendly. So, but uh, now Ron's a good guy. I've known him a long time. Had a lot of fun with Ron. And uh, before we get into the interview, though, um, I want to take care of a few items of business. Number one. Um, I have someone that is looking for a set of bus mirrors for a 69 Astro. Remember them? A lot of you guys didn't like them. I don't know why. Uh, I do. I think they look cool on there. And evidently the designers thought they were cool. But uh, they weren't real popular, so they took them off, I think, by 70. They were back to the West Coast style mirror. So anyways, if anybody out there has a pair of those old bus mirrors, get a hold of me because i got somebody that needs some. Second order of business, you guys may have noticed I'm wearing a hat with Brunt uh, Workwear. They recently came on board with a little bit of sponsorship for me and uh, I thought they were a good fit for the channel. You know, I don't I don't uh, have any sponsors that I don't think are a good fit for the channel. So first was the uh, Venustis heated jacket, uh, which works very nicely and I love that thing. It's uh, Once it's gonna get colder, colder outside, then, then I'll be wearing it again. Um, but, uh, Brunt Workwear got a hold of me, and I use their boots because they're killer. I mean, I just love them. They're, they're heavy duty, but they're lightweight, and they got a um, reinforced toe in them, which I need because I almost sawed my toe off with the old uh, cutter offer <laughs> that we use uh, quite often here. One of the best tools ever. Uh, so um, check down below, and the links are down there, and they're going to give you guys a discount, Trucker's Lounge discount. So. Anytime you order a coat or you order some of the uh, Brunt workwear, they're going to give you a discount. So check that out. Third and final order of business is um, I'm trying to uh, up the subscribers on the channel and I'm trying to break um, 10,000 um, by January. And uh, we're, we're kind of close. I'm getting close to the 8,500 mark. So um, what I'd like you to do is to make sure if you aren't a subscriber, if you would subscribe. And then if you would invite somebody... Uh, if all my subscribers would uh, just go on and invite somebody to check out the channel, if they like it, then go ahead and have them subscribe. It'll really help me uh, keep the channel going, and it kind of pays the bills. And then lastly, I'm going to have a really cool announcement. I think it's a big announcement. Real soon, within the next week or two, uh, putting something together, and I think you guys are going to like it. So uh, stick around town. And now... Let's go yak with Ron Mackey. I have a very uh, special person here with me today. I call him affectionately the Maxter. Um, I've known uh, Ron for, uh, oh my. 25 years. At least. Yeah. Probably 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ron, uh, just quickly, uh, most of you know uh, my career ended up being in law enforcement. And then trucks for later. But uh, 
So Mac was a uh, the wrecker operator here in town for many many years. So uh, forty, he, huh? Forty years. Forty years. So uh, I got to see Mac pretty regular, you know, when we'd have accident scenes or have to tow cars or or have the occasional uh, irreverent customer. Unruly. And, unruly. <laughs> and uh, we have some stories, but probably won't relay those stories in the trucker's lounge. <laughs> but uh, yeah. suffice to say, um, I appreciate our friendship and, and all the years that uh, he's always supported law enforcement and the police department and, and helped us out in many ways. So uh, we have him here today, but Mac also kind of has the... Uh, affectionate name because he drove a Mac, old B-model Mac back yeah. in the day. B67. Yeah, which is kind of a rarer Mac, you said, with the... <laughs> uh, concave back. Yeah, so we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, what I want to do is uh, maybe to start out and just have you uh, tell me about what age and when and how you got into trucking and how that all came about, who you were with. And yeah, well... What happened was I was working for Northwestern Dodge. I was a truck mechanic. And I was also a union steward. And I got tired of that. I spent more time with union business than it was worth, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <coughs> and uh, That's a headache, huh? Yeah. And my brother-in-law worked for Central Transport. And he said, why don't you go trucking with me? I said, I don't think so. I said, I never drove a truck, really drove a truck. I drove in the parking lots, but right. sort of like what you did here, you know. Right. Piddle around. And, and uh, I, I said, man, uh, I don't know. And I kept thinking about it, and I wanted to do it. And I got, I got in a, uh, a car accident, a little car accident. I got the... 2500 bucks, I think, something like that. And now, I, what are we talking here? What time frame? Uh, this? Th this was in the early 70s, 71. Okay. 70, 71, somewhere in that area. I was uh, just 30, 30, 31 years old, something like that. Okay. And I was thinking, man, I ought to try that. And he's telling me, he says, he was a the company driver, he was pedal man, and uh, he switched and bought a truck and he became a broker, and uh, Central Transport was uh, noted for that. It's, they said, you want to work? We'll put you to work. Buy a truck. Buy one of their trucks. Yeah, buy, well, buy any, e truck. any okay. truck. They put on other trucks too, but that was a good way for them to get rid of their stockpile yeah and get decent money out of it right so <coughs> good business he told me he says uh, I got to, uh, I my tr my old horse that I had he said uh, they just put a motor in it and then they retired it he said that's got a good motor and he says it's got less than 10,000 miles on it I said well that's a thought and I says <clears throat> Let's go down and look at them. So there was about 40 or 50 trucks in the yard there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, they had 30 brokers, 30 of them that were, were looking for jobs. And, yeah, we'll put you to work. Buy a truck. Yeah. We'll take it out of your pay. Everything will be cool. And I said, well, that sounds all right to me. Yeah. So I, got, I, I bought this Dodge. A C800 had a 361 uh, motor in it. No, it's gas. Gas job. Gas. Okay. 361. And five dollars. of the two-speed axle. Okay. I'm familiar with that. And uh, yeah, well, <laughs> so everything worked on a truck. 2,500 bucks. I says, well, okay, I'll take one. That's a uh, I took it, they gave me my lease number. I remember it was L273, my lease number was, so. Were you able to pick the truck that had the, the good motor? Yeah, Because you yeah, have a little I, inside I, information I, there, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and you know, and it turned out, 
And that was a good deal because out of the 30 brokers at, at the end of two months or one month or two months somewhere in there there was only five of us left yeah <coughs> so and central transport was good for that if you wanted to work they work you to death mm -hmm. they just work you to, they weren't the biggest paying company but right. the, they paid okay where were they based out of we're in ohio here Detroit. Detroit. Oh, Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I went to work. They they give you work. The first thing they did was to give me a trailer. It says take this trailer to Lansing. It was an empty trailer. It's okay. I got paid for that. But so I took off, and the first day I was man, I was scared to death. I never, never pulled a trailer, and now I got to pull to Lansing. Lansing was about 100 miles from Detroit. So your rig was a single axle or a double? I was single a single axle. axle. Dodge, uh, eight, uh, yeah. gas job, and then what was the, the, the trailer? Trailer was tandem, 45 footer, 40, 40, oh. 45 footer. They gave you the big guns right away. Holy yeah. Mackerel. So <coughs> I got it to Lansing, all right, to the terminal. Dropped it, picked up one there, and brought it back to Detroit. And I was on my way. I, was, mm -hmm. I had I had a hundred miles under my belt, and I was feeling good. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was, so other than being scared to death, your first time there, a pretty uneventful trip. Yeah, I, we didn't. I didn't have any trouble. And the, the truck could make. I could run sixty mile an hour with it. Yep. You know. It, it would it would run that, but when the wind would blow, you you couldn't go nowhere with that thing. Yeah, you just pull, drop the gears, drop gears, drop gears. Right. And uh, so I had that truck, and uh, I felt pretty good in a Dodge truck because, uh, you know, my uncle was a Dodge dealer here, and I started working for him when I was right. 19 years old. So that was basically your gig for a few years, then just central yeah. transport, going back and forth. Yeah, that's how I got here. I, I, I switched to the Akron terminal, and they gave me an tra empty trailer to tow down to Akron. Okay. It's supposed to be my, well, every time they put a broker on, they put a trailer with them. Mm -hmm. So you, you never see the trailer again, but... And not unless you haul on some freight in it and you remember the number, but right. I, yeah, I never did. Move, move my furniture in my, in that empty trailer. Okay. Put it all in there and come to Conneaut and bought a house. Mm hmm And mm -hmm. I was out of Conneaut, but but I mean I was really Central didn't have rights here to Conneaut. They do now, but mm -hmm. they don't. They didn't then. So that company's still in business. Yeah. Central Transport. Yeah, well, Hoffa had something to do with that, too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Maddie Maroon was uh, the owner of uh, Central Transport. And they had 104 doors in that in that uh, terminal in Detroit. Hey, buddy. Hey, boys. How are you? How are you? I'm, I'm all right. The world's all wrong. Yes, sir. This video is brought to you by Brunt. Transforming high-performing workwear. There ain't no flip-flops in this truck. Well, we're back. We had a little interruption there. Mr. Wizard stopped by and we ended up in a big BS session, which is yeah. uh, what the truckers do well, right? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> so, so here we are on another day. I wasn't a loss for words. No. <laughs> yeah. You're all right, right? Yeah. The world's all wrong. I'm the world's all, right. all wrong. See? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. Um, so where we left off was uh, you were talking about how uh, uh, they didn't originally have rights uh, into what Ohio was it you said? Well, they had, they they bought the Mohawk when they bought Mohawk out. They got their rights, I think. And they expanded into Ohio. You said Jimmy Hoffa but, had something to do with that, didn't you? Well, 
Now, I don't know whether Jimmy Hoffa had anything to do with that or not, but he had something to do with the company. Matty Maroon was the owner, but Jimmy they say Jimmy Hoffa had something to do with that company. <coughs> but that, that company wasn't probably the best there was out there, mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad. If you wanted to work, they took care of you. Yeah. They wanted they they wanted you to run at least two thousand miles a week, which was okay. I I did that, not a problem. Yeah, in the uh, Dodge, right? We're still well. Going. I did it in the Mac and the Dodge, both of them. When did the Mac come into play? I had the Dodge for about ten months, and then I traded it in for the Mac. How'd that come about? And they weren't. I just I just wanted the diesel. It wasn't, the uh, gas motor wasn't getting it for me. Gotcha, yeah. And uh, especially when you got wind. It would slow you down like crazy. So I said, man, that's that. i got to get a diesel. And so what model was that, Mac, that you bought? Uh, a, a B67. 67, okay. Uh, Owens, Illinois truck is what it was. I went down and I looked at it and, Centro didn't want me to have it. They wanted you to have a Dodge, a Ford, or or a Chevy. Because they did so much work with the mm -hmm. the automotive industry, they didn't want a Mac. Oh, okay. Well, too but, bad. You you were footing the bill, right? I said, "Hey, it's a good truck. I gotta have it." And they didn't. They didn't uh, put up too much of a fuss. Yeah. But they wanted me to paint it, and I didn't paint it. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll paint it one of these days." But <laughs> yeah. It, it was a a sort of an off off gray uh -huh. color. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't wasn't the prettiest truck there was. Right. Right. But it got down the highway good. Mm hmm. And that was a single axle also? Yeah, single axle, two, uh, duplex transmission. That's where I grew my belly. That's where I <laughs> learned how to drive it. That's right. You had to you have put one your to drive belly it. up against the steering wheel and grab them sticks and <laughs> go like that. <laughs> hey, don't let him kid you. I know how he grew his belly. Yeah. We got some coffee cake here Yeah, we, we had beforehand. You know, I got to keep them happy. Yeah, well, it. Yeah, I spent my time in the coffee shops a lot. Yeah. But I, I, they used to be nice. You used to have diners all over, all the way you know, across my route between mm -hmm. from the, oh, the, heck yeah. Detroit and Akron. That's the day of the mom and pop yeah. coffee shops and, and little truck stops. I used to stop at Jonesy's every run uh, to around two or three in the afternoon. I'd stop there and where was that at? Have coffee. That's on Route Two. It's just outside of uh, Tucson, Ohio. Hmm. You know, I never even heard of Tucson, Ohio. Why? You know where Davis, Bessie? Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. The, yeah. And that there were about ten miles from there. Okay. Is that place still there? No, probably no, not. No, it's yeah. gone. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I often run by and see. That would be so cool. If you would have said yes, I'd say, that's my next trip. I'm heading up yeah. there to film that place. Yeah, they... Uh, no matter what shape it would have been in. And they had they had another one on the curve there. And that, that was a truck stop, a mm. real truck stop. But uh, that's gone, too. Yeah. 
I also want to show these guys, uh, this is something uh, Matt gave to me, and you got to see it up close. And hopefully we can focus in on it. Let's see if she's going to do that, which I think she is. It's a Detroit diesel lighter, and Zippo. yeah, on the back of it, it's got the uh, injector timing tool. Well, but uh, anyways, you, you, you can see that it's a Detroit diesel lighter. So Matt gave me that, and he also gave me a uh, kind of a, uh, there was only so many of these, special edition. 5,000 of them they made, sorry. Yeah, from, from Mac Tools. I uh, told him I well appreciate all those goodies. So we got them on display here in the Trucker's Lounge, along with a lot of stuff you guys have sent in. And we'll do an update around Christmas and show a lot of the memorabilia. So uh, thanks again for that. So kind of moving a little backwards there, you mentioned uh, Jimmy Hoffa's name. So uh, so, yeah. so since we're, we, we mentioned that, you told me uh, that you actually sat down and had coffee with the man. I did. Tell me about that. I did that. at a local beanery, uh, a diner. Uh -huh. uh, he was a very personable, personable guy. He, he took care of his rank and file. Mm -hmm. That's why he was so popular. Right. You know, I've had people, I've had truckers tell me, I said, well, man, he stole from the union. I don't care what he done, he got us where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's why I stand by him. And he he wasn't a, a bashful guy. He was he was very outspoken. Right. You know, it wasn't very big, but he'd fight like a, a tiger. You know? When I joined the Teamsters when I was trucking, mm -hmm. and that that's his local, 299. Oh, okay. That's Jimmy Hoffa's local. And he... Uh, he disappeared. Last time they seen him was at Kingsley Inn, mm -hmm. which was right up around 15 Mile Road in, in uh, Woodward Avenue. And my mother-in-law lived at 14 of them near Woodward. So we were only, only a couple of miles away from where he, where he disappeared. Okay, and that's Detroit, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. right. He, he uh, come up missing right after I quit. So how did, how did this... Uh sit down happen I mean how did you get to have coffee with him well he he, he was in the diner and when he showed up everybody knew who oh, okay. he was yeah. yeah and I I knew I thought I knew who he was I wasn't sure right then when he said it was half I I said hello to him and uh, he he spoke to me want to know if I was a teamster and I said yeah and that a boy, you know, he says, you know, he was a, uh, he was just a casual conversation, a mm -hmm. little bit of, I, I didn't take up the whole time with him, but yeah. it, I just got a chance to say hello to him. And, I, uh, you know, my impression of him was, was pretty good at that time. Yeah. And I, I was, I was a little disappointed that they offed him. Yeah. <laughs> But see, when Fitzpatrick took over the union, they didn't want Jimmy back. Yeah, that's what they and say. He, yeah. and, they, and they know that if it came to a vote, he'd have smoked them guys. Yeah. Well, I know you have uh, some good stories to tell us. You, you uh, two, two that stick out in my mind that I'd like to to share with you guys is. Uh, you said you were driving uh, across a set of railroad tracks in the winter one time and kind of. You know, got an extra ride. <laughs> oh boy, that was scary. Uh, I, it was it was in April of '71, I think, and we got a snowstorm, and it went to us crossing Route Two, going across Route Two, and I was at that Erie Industrial Park. Uh, it's it's actually Port Clinton, I think. Mm, okay. And uh, you in the Mac or the the uh, Dodge in that? Well, I was I was in the Dodge okay. with that, and I had it in ninth gear, and I was I had it on the floor, and I was doing forty five miles an hour, and I used to go over them railroad tracks every day, at forty five miles an hour, and it was boom boom, and that was it. Yeah, and uh, 
I hit that railroad tracks and that sent my trucks sliding sideways and I said, oh man. <coughs> and I, I'm grabbing a wheel and I'm going like this and it's turning and turning. <laughs> and I find it's the last, last uh, second one. It jackknifed into the trailer and I kinked the corner of my cab a little bit. It came around to the left side and okay. it kept kept going and I I kept grabbing the wheel and trying to turn it out of there right. and it uh, it was it was a scary situation. And it was cold and was blowing and it was I was amazed that I kept it in that circle. Mm -hmm. Well I had a forty five foot trailer on there. Wow. And I I did a three sixty. With that thing, and wow. and kept it in the roadway. What a ride! Yeah, and uh, <laughs> were you loaded or was it empty? It was an empty trailer. That's probably why, huh? Probably yeah, have done that I either. didn't. Uh, if I'd have had a load, it probably would have kept it on the highway. Mm -hmm. But uh, sheriff come by. And he looked and he says, "Well, he says, don't feel bad. He says you're the fifth one tonight." Oh. So uh, you guys also uh, know that I kind of have a soft spot for GMCs, and yeah. we were talking about GMC Astros one day, and Mac uh, said, "I have a story when <laughs> one time you, you were a passenger in an Astro, weren't you, with a buddy?" Or oh yeah, oh yeah. Tell I was learning a new job. We had Ford Motor Company. We had hauled Mustangs for them, and they had an enclosed trailer, and it was a relic. They had everything. You had to pull the stands out and to get them to unload them and everything else. There was a lot of work, bull yeah. work. How many Mustangs fit in, fit in that? Four. Trailer? Four, yeah. I wouldn't think too many more. But. Four, four Mustangs. And I used to pull them to dealerships around the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. My buddy, his name was Rick Elvers. He had a GMC Astro 70. Two or seventy-three GMC mm -hmm. Astro, oh, yeah. and uh, he had a nice truck. But them guys had them big trucks had payments, mm -hmm. and they had to work. They couldn't get sick. Right, right. You couldn't get sick one day because you had to, you had to make payments. Mm -hmm. We were riding, and he he was showing me how to how to. How to hook these these up and how to f take the Mustangs off and, and everything. Yeah, so I uh, so anyways we were we got done around one o'clock in the morning, something like that, and we stopped at a local tavern that we we always frequent, and, you know, and I only had one beer. I had a beer, and one beer was time to go. Yeah close so we're leaving and uh, we see these two girls out in the street yelling help I said what help what, what's wrong with them I said Rex so stop a minute you know? I said what's the matter I said you guys need a ride she said no we got our own car these guys are chasing us I said well I don't see anybody well, they're chasing us. I says, well, I'll tell you what, we'll sit here, get in your car, lock your doors, and get out of here. Right. <laughs> so, they did that, and just as we said that, he had the semi parked right in the middle of Coney Avenue, and there was enough room in there for a doodle bug to get through there, but yeah. there wasn't enough room to get a car through there. Yeah. But he went through. Mm hmm Scraped both both cars that he and and the semi. He caught the semi. <laughs> he caught the wheels of the semi so it didn't do any damage to really the semi, but it got to the bumper. When it got to the bumper it pit, bent that but bent nice, it out. Yeah. nice chrome bumper like you got mm -hmm. on there. It bent that bumper out. <coughs> and I said Rick, this guy just hit your truck. No, he didn't hit it. I said, yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I got out of the truck and uh, this guy, I called him an a-hole and he got, he got a little bit upset. So you ain't calling me that. And I says, yeah, I am. <laughs> and uh, he was a good size guy. He was 6'1", 6'2". Six six yeah. And uh, yeah, he swung at me. Uh-huh. Right, hey. Well, when he swung at me, I don't move back. Right. I stepped inside of it, and he clubbed me around the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. And I hit him so good with a left hook and I wish I could have took the right hand back. Yeah. Because I cracked him with a left hook and it set him up and it put him in the air and actually was knocked out, but I, I hit him again with a, a combination of right hand and... <laughs> Down he went. <laughs> right, right in the middle of the Conan <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. Right in the double yellows. And he's slaying there. He's, a, he's out. Mm -hmm. Now his buddy starts screaming and he was a little guy like five foot seven or something like that and he had long hair mm -hmm. hippie style at that time cops didn't care for hippies mm -hmm. and he's going you SOBs didn't have to beat him up like that I said don't get it he didn't have anything to do with it all he had to do he owns a truck yeah I did it. Well, I hear Detroit cop comes through there. And now Hamtramck is here, mm -hmm. and then Detroit surrounds it. So to get to the other side of Detroit, they had to go through that little piece of Hamtramck. Yeah. And uh, Detroit, and I says, hey, hey, we got a little problem here. And the guy's laying on the on the ground. That's Ham Tramick. Call Ham Tramick. Yeah. <laughs> I said what? So I called. Ham. I got on the phone. We went to the corner phone. And I got the phone. And called Ham Tramick. And they said we ain't coming out. You got to come to the station. Well, we were only two blocks from the station. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got there. Uh, well, he he was he was still sleeping on the ground. And I said, Rick, we better pick him up. Somebody's going to run over. Him. Yeah. And so we picked him up and put him in his car, and I'm slapping him in the face. <laughs> hey, wake up! Like, don't you lay down on me like that. <laughs> he started groaning. I said, <laughs> immediately, Doctor Mackey. Well, he's all right. Yeah, yeah. He's all right. He's <laughs> As you breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> he's groaning, yeah. So we got to the station, and there were two big cops in there. And so he says to that one guy come in that I hit, I looked at him uh, when he got in the light. I said, man, he looks bad. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe the damage I did to him with just two punches, you know? Yeah. He yeah. was a swollen mess. And he goes, he says to the cop, says to me, he says, all right, he said, what's your story? And the guy, the guy says, I know my rights. I don't got to say nothing. <laughs> I says, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. I'll tell you my side if you want to hear it. Yeah. So and the girls are there too now. All of a sudden, the girls know these guys. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, I, you know, I just, they yelled for help." And I says, "I asked them what happened, and I told them to get to their car and lock their doors, and we'd make sure they got out of there." Right. So the the, the one guy, the little guy, kept calling me an sob. And he says, you, you SOBs didn't have to beat him up like that. And I, I, I got mad. I, I couldn't hold it anymore. And I <laughs> finally said, I says, you know what? I says, I've been an SOB twice now. I ain't going to be another one. Yeah. I says, I'll tell you what. Say that to me one more time. And I says, I'll, I'll fix you up like I did your buddy here. Yeah. <laughs> and we both can sit in the slammer for the night. Yeah. And a cop never raised his head. Mm -hmm. Just kept writing. Yeah. And I, I was shocked. I, he was I, probably I, like, "Do it, do it, do it." He didn't <laughs> say anything. 
he <laughs> so then after he left, we left last. He said, "Why didn't you hit that little long-haired?" <laughs> yeah. And he says, "I I don't." Uh, and I wouldn't have said nothing. I said, well, why didn't you wink? I yeah. would have hit him. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> the guy was really irritating me. All right, Mac. It's been awesome having you here. I appreciate you coming by. Always. You're always welcome. So until next time, you guys keep the hammer down. Take this out.